problem um, because, well, you, you do something that I have curiosity about, <laughs> which means I'll, I have lots of questions for you. That's basically what that means. So uh, I think this will be good. Um, you're not going to hear any of the post-production stuff. So we like there is no breaks. You were the goal is for us to just talk straight through. It should sound like a normal conversation that which would happen at a coffee shop, uh, etc. Okay. So uh, the things that happen during a normal conversation, interruptions, laughter, etc. We tend to leave all of that stuff in. So um, if for some reason, though, in the, the recording, there's something that, you know, if we need to stop and restart, uh, what that simply means is that I need you to snap into the microphone three times, wait three seconds and then pick right up where you left off. But I have a feeling you guys know all about that already. Yes, we're, uh, yes. Yep. Uh, super clear instructions. Thank you. What's that? Those are super clear instructions. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> that's how we roll too, Jay. It's kind of funny. We're like, that's, that's, that's just the way Jack is. We don't stop. You know, there, it's one take on everything. <laughs> For the most part, yes, that is pretty much how we roll. Um, unless something magically like weird begins to happen, like I've, I've had Skype disconnect before in the middle, and that's that's always fun. So, uh, but we try to not uh, annoy our editor too much with um, stuff that that can be prevented or done in in some way, shape, or form, because um, I want them to continue to like me. Yeah, that's it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't want to end up doing what they do. <laughs> too much work. Anyway, um, so the typical format, we're going to start out talking about you guys, how you got into what you do, then ultimately what you do. And I can say unequivocally that the, the information that I was sent ahead of time, the, the questions and whatnot, I tend to ignore those uh, because I, I'd rather hear your response to my questions and go from there. Does that make sense? Perfect. Yes. Excellent. Uh, now, is there anything in, uh, in particular that you wanted to make sure that we did talk about today? And if so, what was that? No, I don't think so. I think uh, I love your format and I think we'll, I think it'll be fun. That's how we roll. When we interview people, we just kind of let it free flow. We don't have any formal questions that we always touch on and it's always more fun, I think. Got it. Uh, yeah, perfect, perfect. So there are there are two questions that are pretty much the same. Um, and there actually, I think I'm going to insert a third because if, I believe you guys would be able to answer this. So let me, so the first, uh, the first question and the last question are pretty much the same for everyone. And they're the jumping off point to help give okay. some context to who you are, etc. cetera. Um, I'm not going to tell you what those are because it's always an extemporaneous <laughs> answer that I'm after. Oh. So <laughs> now, but, uh, there is. So I've been selecting certain guests uh, to ask this particular question, and I just need to know if this is something you would feel comfortable asking or answering. Uh, and again, no is a completely acceptable answer. I'm, I'm just looking for more people. But basically, um, you guys, I mean, we all know that uh, the question basically comes down to what you've learned on your journey to seven figures that a formal education could have never taught you and mm. if you have like a top three in that particular category if that's something that you are uh, you believe you you could answer uh, I would enjoy inserting that one somewhere in here as well I thought you're gonna ask uh, you know ask me something like how often we sleep together <laughs> no I still do I mean I wasn't even <laughs> sure if you guys in. were married <laughs> later I, <laughs> I wasn't even sure if you guys were a couple or what, but to be honest, I didn't know because the last name thing. So I was like, ah, I'm not going to go there. Uh, that, that I was going to totally play it acceptable. safe and pretend as though it was a non a non curiosity. <laughs> but now that you bring but it yes, up, so with, tell with me now, never mind. Um, okay. But is that something that you think you guys could handle? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I figured. Um, now, speaking of which, the I don't know if I call you Steven or Jack or what. Steven would be great. Thank you, Steven. And then, hold on. That's funny. You were Jack and Jill. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <And we> still... <laughs> I just got that. Anyway. <laughs> That's actually funny. Okay, cool. Um, so towards the end, uh, when people are done listening, what do you, what do you want them to, what do you want them to do? Where do you want them to go? 
you know, we can just direct them to landacademy.com. We we have so many uh, lines of revenue now and so many companies, but that just tends to be the one that everybody recognizes us by, so that'll be fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Also, I noticed that you you have an event uh, coming up in October, I believe. I just want to let you know we there is likely no way on earth this will be out before then. So, okay. so just so that you have context uh, in terms of you know when the audience would actually hear it. Obviously, the people listening live they they know, but the ones that are um, the the ones that are on the podcast recording they it's not going to come out in time for them to take advantage of, well, this go around. Does that make sense? I thought you were gonna ask if you could come and I would absolutely save a seat for you, Jay, if you wanted to come. <laughs> to, you know, um, that, that's a good question. Let me check. Let me know. Yeah, 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 I hadn't even thought. I, I honestly uh, hadn't, that wasn't where I was going, but since you bring it up, <laughs> hey, you know, uh, it, it could, turn out to be yet another good thing. So I'm, I'm open to all kinds of interesting things. So cool. let me see. All right, last thing I need to know, or uh, well, maybe. The, uh, could you do me a favor and both of you, just for audio levels and recording purposes, could you both um, pronounce your name? Jill DeWitt. Okay. Stephen Jack Butella. Uh, Jill, could you go that do that again, please? Sure. Jill DeWitt. Okay, perfect. And then, uh, uh, I'm sorry, S Stephen, I did not hear your last name because I know I'm going to butcher it. It's Butella. B-U-T-A-L-A. Bu. Hold on, i got to write that differently then. B -bu -bu Tella. Like nu Nutella. Got it. I got it. Yeah. Right. Like okay. Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Butella. Yeah. That's it. Okay. okay. How many people call you something other than Butella? Because as I read it, it does not look that way <laughs> <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that it's frequent then. Got it. I got it. All right. Uh, one, two, three. Did you guys have any questions for me before we get started? Well, because of uh, the little break that we had, we had a chance to listen to a couple of episodes or parts of them, and I, I got a pretty good feeling about it how you go so this is good cool no problem no problem oh well then you unfortunately you, you i guess you know the first question then huh <laughs> it's the same but it's a good question yes 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 it is uh, it's just a great place to start everything so that's good cool um for and really quickly for those of you watching live hi how you doing Yes, if you can, if you want to, you can put something in the chat. If we have time, I may integrate some of your questions there. Um, and you'll also be able to see, I'll bring up their website here shortly in case you wanna see some of their, the stuff that they're referring to and, the, and the, the things that they do. So if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And if necessary, or if it makes sense, we will integrate those as well. All right, so our, uh, <laughs> Um, I'm gonna do my best not to say Jack and Jill, but <laughs> it's really okay. Do. It's, it's great. It's, it's really okay because it's so awesome. How could you not want to be Jack and Jill anyway? Right? Do Jack and Jill? Can we just Th that was Jack just so great. Sure. All right. Stephen, anyway. thank you. All right. um, so we're gonna get started great. in a moment. So you're gonna hear about three seconds of silence. I'm gonna come back, do the intro, uh, and then you and I are gonna continue talking. Now they've given me a significant amount of information about yourselves. I cannot read it all for the intro. So I am curious if there is something in particular that you want me to make sure that I mentioned during the intro. Uh, you know, pick and choose whatever you'd like out of those, those bios. I've, I just read those bios this morning too, again, cause we had a little bit of time and they're pretty extensive and pretty strong. So Joe yeah. and I have been doing this since the nineties. We've done, you know, it's the 16,000 deal thing that everybody seems to, um, you know, really stop what they're doing and listen. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Okay, cool. So I, I just want to make sure uh, that there's nothing in particular because sometimes I've received those instructions to make sure you introduce them this way. So, you know, uh, you never know. So I just wanted to make sure that that's clear. Cool, then towards the end, uh, you'll hear me do the outro as well. There'll be a final question. You'll hear me do the outro. After the outro, uh, then you and I will be able, there'll be another three seconds, and then you and I, we can all debrief about whatever you'd like. Now, um, because there's two of you, one more thing I just wanna say, 
Sometimes uh, I will create a space for both of you to answer the same question. And sometimes I'll do my best to try to be really clear when who I'm directing a question to so that so that there's no confusion between the two of you. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Um, all right. Cool. All right. Here we go. What time we are at. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you are here today because we are going to talk about something that, honestly, at the Cash Flow Diary Podcast sounds counterintuitive to me because we're, we're going to talk about something that traditionally, historically, maybe even stereotypically, you have said to yourself, that doesn't produce cash flow. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about land. It's not something we talk about often. And there aren't many people that I'm aware of that know how to have land produce cash flow, especially when it's just land. Now, improved land, your apartment buildings, you guys know I love those. Cell phone towers, those are great. Th this stuff, land, I mean, I, I love them for short-term rental. It looks really great. But here's the thing. What we have today, we have individuals who have been doing this for decades, for a very long time. What, what that means is that some of you who are listening to this were not born when they started. Keep this in mind. They've been doing it for as long as you have been alive and they're now willing to share how you can do it too. I'm of course talking none other than Stephen Butala and Jill DeWitt. They've been uh, doing this since 1999. Uh, professional real estate investors, and they focus in on land, but hear me clearly. You've heard me say it before, I'm gonna say it one more time. I don't care how long you've done anything. You could say, yeah, I've been doing this five years, 10 years, 20 years. That means very little to me because what I care about is how much experience do you have? Because you could have 20 years of experience, but if you've only done one deal during that time, what's that really worth? However, when you've done 16,000 transactions, over the course of your career, I would say your experience is worth a lot. So here's what that means for you and I. That means you and I, we get a unique privilege to ask some questions, understand the insides, and most importantly, right now, it's time for us to take some notes, to listen, to learn, and to love Stephen and Jill. Stephen and Jill, how you doing? Good We're doing morning. great, man. Thanks for having us on. Yes. I am uh, pretty glad that you're here because uh, as you just heard me say, land is not something we talk about often because uh, we're, we're the, it's cash flow that we're after here. So we have a, a ton of business owners and entrepreneurs listening and, and cash flow is what we are here to build. So I'm eager to hear how you guys do this and have done this with land. Now, before we go there, though, uh, I have to ask you guys the same question I tend to ask everybody the first time that they're here. Are you ready? Ready. All right. I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes, you know, like Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, Hulk, etc. You get the idea. Because I think that entrepreneurs and superheroes have a ton of things in common. For example, as a entrepreneur, I can envision myself flying around town. Yes, I'm probably wearing a cape and tights at that moment. And, you know, saving our customers one sale at a time. However, also, like a superhero, an entrepreneur has a beginning. I mean, if you think about Spider-Man, for example, there was a time where he was just a kid going to school, doing his thing, and all he was trying to do was earn some money to take Mary Jane on a date. That's it. That's all he wanted. And then one day he gets bit by a spider, discovers he has a superhuman ability, and now he's presented with the choice. Do I use this for good or for evil? So my question to you is as follows. Given everything that you guys have done collectively and individually, all the thousands upon thousands of deals before Land Academy, before helping the people that you have helped, before all of your in-person events, before just, well, everything. What we want to know is, who is Stephen Butala and Jill DeWitt? 
I mean, if uh, if I have to choose a, a superhero, it's hands down Batman. Okay. <laughs> and here's why: because Bruce Wayne, you know, like most superheroes, found himself in a situation he didn't want to be in. Inherited mm. all this money, his parents got murdered, and he has no real powers. So he throws a bunch of resources that he does have access to. In his case, money and some and some uh, help. And creates this character called Batman, um, you know, with the techno with technology. Hmm. So, you know, I, I think that that's what being an entrepreneur is. I, you, you take something that you really don't, you don't know what you're doing. You have an idea of how it wants to go, uh, how you want it to go. You've got access to some resources, but certainly never enough resources, and you just make it work. So, I think that's your question. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. What about you, Jill? I'd have to say Wonder Woman. <laughs> okay. And not just because I like the outfit. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> I have always, since you pointed it out, that yes, we've been doing this for decades, and yes, I watched her on TV. So, um, and I've always been a Wonder Woman fan, and I am, that's how we roll to her and the way that she does things straightforward, truthful. Um, that's her, you know, the, the, what's it called? Her lasso. Her lasso of truth. Yes. I swear I walk around with that in my hand all the time. I am, and that's how we roll. We are upfront and honest, whether it's good news or bad news. You know, we're going to say it like it is. And I think that's, that's kind of the foundation of Land Academy. So you're like the 1970s Wonder Woman. Yes. Wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. So, all right. So let's uh, riddle me this, Batman. Um, (laughs) I, what, what I want to know, though, is before you decided to put on the cape and the cowl, uh, before you had the tools, where does Steven start? Like, what, who, who was Steven before that, that superhero moment, that incident where he discovers I've got something useful or I'm in this situation I don't want to be in and I need to find a way to deal with it? I, was, I graduated from Michigan State in 1989 and became a uh, almost immediately became a commercial real estate broker huh. in one of the worst economic environments uh and in one in maybe the worst city from a real estate standpoint <laughs> uh, at that time so i got thrust into an almost impossible situation and i put myself into it um and then for the le- next several years um, i have an accounting background next several years made it work uh, mm. I, I purchased and sold a, uh, a lot of nursing homes and assisted living facilities for companies all, all around the country because that's where I could accumulate data. Help, help, the healthcare industry has a lot more data about real estate and other stuff than most industries. So through that, I uh, became a partner at KPMG. There's, I'm skipping a lot of steps uh, because Jill's story is m- way more interesting than mine. <laughs> <laughs> if you say and, so. And then, you know, I cut my teeth on maybe the most complicated real estate transaction there ever was. It takes a year to buy a long-term care facility. You've got to get the federal government's approval, the state, uh, the state government that it's in it's approval. Then you got the natural stuff of a buyer and seller and financing. And we all know time kills deals. And after a year, a lot of those deals don't close. So I took it upon myself to create the simplest transaction from that experience, which is a buyer and a seller and a deed in a checkbook <laughs> and so we did 16,000 of those instead of just banging our heads against the wall commercial real estate wise and here we are yeah no I, I it's funny that you mentioned the complication of long-term care uh, that was actually something I don't know eight years ago that I was looking into and when I realized how complicated it was I was like there's got to be an easier one I don't want to do that I just didn't yep. want to go through the just to go through that process seemed like I'm like it's almost like they don't want you in there <laughs> yeah it was very challenging to figure it out and it's just like you know what nah, I'll figure find something else out to do but I get that 100% um, and then simplifying your life also makes sense so uh, Jill no pressure but he he said that your story is more interesting oh <laughs> <laughs> well I grew up uh, next to Disneyland literally <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we just, that's how I knew it was nine o'clock at night. Oh, when you heard yeah. the fireworks go off. <laughs> right. So that was, I had a, a, a pretty awesome childhood, I should say. I, I've always maintained I want to be by the beach, and we're right back here by the beach. So, um, and I, I kind of, I knew growing up 
that well, I was my dad had a, uh, was a Dale Carnegie instructor, and he became a commercial airline pilot. And he raised me on a couple things. Like one was, you know, you can do anything you want. He said, I always wanted to have a career that I could work very little and make a lot of money. And I thought, well, that's sung to me. And he also right. taught me act like you know what you're doing and and watch how things work out. And I, I, I've always walked around like that, you know, and before you know it, you do know what you're doing. So I did some college and I got into travel. I worked for American myself, American Airlines, following my dad. And I never was far from real estate. I did work for some developers when I was early in my 20s. And I, I watched what was happening. They would buy dirt, but they would build it up into a strip mall or an office complex, mm-hmm. lease it out and keep it. And I worked for them through the, I saw the whole thing from the dirt to handling the tenants. Um, so that I, so when I met up with Jack, AKA Steven years later, and it was just natural for me to get back into this. You know, I, my dad was still always dabbling in real estate on the side, had his own investment properties, wherever he was living, whether it was California or Texas. And so getting back into it for me was like, I'm home. So I love it. Yeah, no, no, I totally get that. Now, wait, were you a pilot? I am a pilot. I did not do it uh, as a career. I just have my private pilot's license. Dude, that is definitely something I've been, it's one of those things where you like say to yourself, one day I'm going to go through that process because it, 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 What's Thank that? <laughs> it is. It is kind of like, yeah. <laughs> it won, it, I was, um, and it, there was a time where I thought I was actually going to go into the Air Force. And the only way I was willing to go into the Air Force is if I could be a pilot. And then when I was going for the exam, they, they told me my, very specifically, my legs were too long and my torso was too short. And I'm like, to be a pilot. I could still get in the Air Force, but I just couldn't be a pilot. So long story short, that didn't happen. But right. I still want to learn to fly because that sounds like fun. To, it still sounds like fun to me. Now, I'm curious to, to hear a couple of things. In every superhero story, in every moment, every entrepreneur, they go through this process whereby they're bumbling along in, in life in some way, shape, or form. They're, they appear to be like everybody else until there's an intervening event that typically calls them out, uh, helps them recognize you, if you will, their unique ability. I'm curious to hear about what that unique ability you believe that that exists for you. And more importantly, how did you discover it? Oh, uh, I I think we have separate unique abilities. I'll go first. Mm -hmm. I would Um, hope so. I mean, if you're working together and you have the same one, both of you turning invisible would not be good. (laughs) My, I have, uh, two unique abilities. Number one is, uh, I think that I have a knowing now after ha- having a, a group, we've created a land Academy group full of members, uh, who have a lot of different types of unique abilities. I understand now about myself through that process, that mm. ability to analyze data, uh, real estate data specifically, and, and turn it into a successful offer blind offer campaign is pretty unusual. Got it. So there's that. And I just, for, for whatever reason, I, and I was born with this. I just, when we start a project, I just won't stop. I'll be half dead before I, we just won't stop until it's done. Got it. You got the follow through bug. I love it. <laughs> I think mine is, um, I have the ability to connect with people of all backgrounds. And my, over time, I just, I just uh, started to realize, you know, one job after another, I come in the morning, there's six people sitting on my desk waiting to talk to me and tell me about their day or their weekend. And it was funny because at one time it was all like dating related and they all wanted to have, ask my advice about dating and they were all in different situations and different relationships and things right. like that. So, and then going to further into career wise, you know, I've never had trouble speaking to someone Regardless, same thing though, their background, their, their education, their financial situation. I've, I can, I, I'm able to, you know, kind of put myself in their shoes Mm -hmm. and it really helps me now because gosh, I, I talk to sellers and make them feel good when I'm buying property for very little money 
or I can talk to big developers and hammer out really large deals just as easily. Yeah, and, and I think you're, you're hitting on something that's important for anyone considering real estate or business in general to be able to understand. I'm, uh, oftentimes, in fact, when, when I've interviewed or been looking for an executive assistant, uh, one of the questions I'll ask them, I was like, are you, can you talk to someone who you may have seen on television uh, or, or play a sport um, and, and in that same day, same conversation, also talk to your firefighter uh, or teacher or you know, sanitation engineer, whatever, uh, and treat them both the same. Do you have that well, ability? I just, I just failed at that interview. You did? Because <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> it's funny, but I used to look at my friends and I wonder, you know, you're right, Jay. I used to wonder, like, what's wrong? Why, why are they intimidated? I used to think there was something wrong with me because I would barrel into a room and I'm not intimidated about anything. I don't care who's sitting at the other end of the table. And it's never changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I probably uh, hated I a... that, but. <laughs> my, my, well, well, I had a mentor uh, on a, um, oddly enough, his name was Steve. So, <laughs> and he would say, you know, it's like everybody that they have hopes like you do. They have dreams like you do. They have pain like you do. They're, they're human. And that helped me to humanize anything that I've might've, uh, uh, you know, accredited someone with that would cause that hesitation. And it's just something that absolutely is necessary. So, now, here's the thing that I now I have to ask. As you're going through this journey, uh, at least for most of us, we're told at the beginning to go to school, get good grades, get a job. Uh, is that a message that you managed to receive too? Oh man, I think it's really smart to go to, to get some type of formal education. Uh, I don't think that it's a traditional four-year degree that we all kind of grew up on is necessary uh, as much any longer, but I do think it's important to spend at least two years in a workforce, and I don't mean that really at Starbucks, I mean in a professional capacity, <laughs> to, to realize whether or not you want to make that your career, or if you want to go off on your own. For mm -hmm. us, it was accounting. We were, we were expected to, and I don't think this is the case anymore, to go work for a public accounting firm for two to four years, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of how painful it was, and believe me, it was painful, <laughs> and then decide if you're going to go on the partner track or if you're going to go uh, buy a company or start a company. And so I, I think that to this day, I think that it's still important to, uh, you know, everybody on the show is probably listening, they're an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur wannabe. You have to go through that pain, and it's so painful for our personality types to really realize, man, I'm going to give it my all when I go out on my own. Absolutely. Now, Jill, I, I have a special question, or that same question, but for, for a special reason. I am a father of three daughters. Oh. Okay. And, and one son, so I don't want to forget him too. But okay. specifically, <laughs> my, my daughters, one of the things that uh, I care about is making sure that, uh, you know, when they leave the house, is that they have a skill set such that they, they are not dependent, uh, they don't believe themselves to be dependent on a man to be able to earn an income. And I'm just curious to hear if any of that was anything like that as a part of your decisions behind, you know, your, your desire to be, you know, independent and, and, and separate or, but how that message of go to school, get good grades and get a good job landed for you. You know, it just, I was raised that way that you're raising your, your girls. And I love that. It was never, you know, we just want to get her to that point and get her married off. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was, what are you going to do with your life? And, and, you know, it, my dad kind of raised me like my brother, you know, um, what are you guys going to do? Think big, mm -hmm. go big. And mm -hmm. I'm right here. I won't let you fall that, that far kind of thing. I'm gonna let you fall but not that far. Right. But it really did encourage us to, um, you know, just go for big stuff, which I really love. Cause I think that's part of why my brother and I both, um, went, went big, man. So <laughs> that's that kind of how we say it here is go big or go home. It's like, exactly. why? Exactly. <laughs> it's yeah. like, my why brother, are you going he, to bother? Not to say anything, but he actually went to be the state treasurer of Arizona and now he's the CFO for NASA. So that's, it's, so we're kind of trying to one up each other all the time. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the argument can be easily settled by who has 
more free time. Oh, I totally agree with you. And I think I won. Yeah, I, 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 that, that's exactly where I was headed. I was pretty sure that that, that, that was the case. That's why I said it, because yep. there's a certain quality of life that I, I, I would imagine that you have that he is still hoping to obtain. Now, exactly. I love him dearly, but um, I don't have a boss like he does. And it's, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> right. So with this as the context, then let me ask you both this question. Uh, in your journey, on your way to seven figures uh, and beyond, what I guess the question then becomes, what is it? What are those top three things that you have learned that you know formal education could have never taught you? I don't know, Jill. Um, formal education could have, it does not prepare you in any way, in my opinion, for the politics of an office, for oh. sure preach so, <laughs> and and just i don't know why it's just never addressed uh they certainly don't prepare you for like you know how you uh, had some of us took home economics in high school mm. where it's like here's the reality of it you gotta have a budget you gotta do that there's no co school like or there there is one i never took that in formal that class in formal education like how to show up for life that's what i would call a class how to show so up for they don't like prepare that. you they prepare you academically for what's possible they don't show you how to do anything. And, and so if you go into it and just academically discuss things and think about it and look at case studies, like maybe I think law school would be like, mm. what the hell good is that? You know, I mean, I think some of that's good for sure. a while, but it's like I took a, Jill and I are big boaters. I took a class a long time ago to get my boating license in Michigan specifically for sailboats. And all we did was talk about sailing and I'm, and I, it was in winter. And I said, what, at what point are we going to actually get in the boat? And they're like, oh no, that's, that's not going to happen here. So that's what I think formal education is like. <laughs> I, <laughs> well my, I'm trying to think about Mike, what would be my three? And I think formal education, it's, it's, um, I, I what was missing for me is scrappiness, hmm. talking to people and dreaming big. <laughs> <laughs> If those were classes, I would have I would have taken those. <laughs> I need to teach those classes, by the way. Right. So let's 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 hone in on something because you both kind of you you both kind of hinted at it, and I just want to see where where let's see if we can take that a little bit deeper. Is the idea or the concept of thinking big? It, it, it could. I mean, one could imply from what you're saying that formal education limits one's ability to think outside or to a certain scale or, or way? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm so this this subject is so um, Jill and I have three kids and this subject is so I, I never know what to tell these kids because I do want them to go to school and I want them to have to start out in a career that working for somebody else. But and two of them work for us now. Anyway, the two of the three and the third <laughs> one's not old enough yet. So, you know, I really think that some type, I'm going to go back to my old answer. I, I really think formal education is important, but you just got to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. So you, you're, you're saying then that we tend to ascribe too much importance to it or over importance on it, not to exclude it, but it does have value. If, even if that value is only to give you context so that you might appreciate the other side of life. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give a little anecdote. Um, okay. We develop a lot of websites. Tech tech is uh, kind of my responsibility. And it's a very different role in a different process than buying and selling real estate, which has mm. always been and probably always will be our main business. But we we develop these tools and I'm not selling anything here. We have one that's called Parcel Facts mm -hmm. because it's very difficult. It's uh, well, it's almost impossible. The vast majority of the real estate on the in the this country has has yet to be assigned a physical address by the post office. So all you can all you have is the state and the county and the APN, the assessor's parcel number. And so there was no tool that I was aware of until we developed Parcel Fact, where you just put those in and it and it gives you all this information about you know a property that's very rural, the uh, you know GPS boundaries, the owner, how long they've owned it, what they paid for it. So it's been a huge tool for us in, in our membership. So. You know, the, all the tech people that were involved in these projects, without exception, went to uh, a school like DeVry, or they went to some technical place that was, they didn't go to Stanford, they didn't go to Harvard or even Michigan State. They went to these short-term, 
learn how to do it, not phil philosophize about it, learn how to do it technical schools. Mm -hmm. And so I think that now more than ever, that kind of education is, is appropriate. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I would definitely 100% agree. Vocational education has a, an immense value proposition relative to, well, what a, that traditional education typically costs for sure. Um, so now I'm curious, how does, I mean, all right, everybody, I mean, listening, they, they know about, they know that real estate's something that's great um, in, in some way, shape or form. We, you guys know that I'm a, I'm a cash flow person. I am asset agnostic, simply meaning I, I don't really care the underlying asset. I care, can it produce cash flow? That's it. But mm -hmm. my question to you is, why land? It's the easiest product type I think there is in this business. And the majority of the time, it's a seller and a buyer. Mm -hmm. And that's it. There's no agent. There's no lender. There's no appraiser. There's no inspector. There's, you know, and we can, with two people, I buy it from you. And I buy it so well, I mark it up. I resell it to the next guy. Three people were involved. I just made money and I can do it really fast. Like within a, two days or a day. Okay. We have questions now. Oh, yeah. right. I, can, I, can, you know, I can walk you through the anatomy of a deal really quickly. And well, well help. It, before we get to that, I, there's something that she said that I, I want to challenge because you okay. said land is the easiest. <laughs> and okay. So, and, and maybe it's because I, the, the majority of the time that I've looked at land deals or considered them, I've been uh, in, in the world of California or international. So maybe, that, maybe those are the two things that are at play here that have my perspective on land being way more challenging than what you are currently uh, saying. However, between uh, the EPA, the Coastal Commission, the environment, uh, uh, the, the, the potential for the surveys and all the other things that we've had to deal with in connection with just figuring out it, and doing the due diligence, except it was challenging is, is not even the word, you know, and then, then having to figure out how to turn that raw piece of land into something that produces cash flow was always and still to some degree a, a mystery because I'm thinking about the entitlements and the building and I was like, okay, so, I, you know, Jill, help a brother out, man. <laughs> 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 what am I, I'm, I'm missing something. I love it, Jay. Well, this is one of the beauties of it. People, you're not alone. Um, people think it's harder than it is and it's really not that hard. I can send out an offer to a sweet little old lady who owns 40 acres in, you know, let's just say Kern County. Mm -hmm. uh, she, they thought they're going to retire there. They never, they never, they're not going to, they never did. They never built on it. They get our offer. This is kind of how it goes. She calls me back or she signs it and sends it back, by the way. It's got a cash amount on there. And whoa, she whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Your okay. initial contact with them is a, is literally an offer? Yep. That's our very first thing right out of the gate. Dear Mrs. Smith, I want to buy your 40 acres uh, at APN, you know, whatever it is mm. for, you know, X, whatever thousand um, dollars. Here's who we are. Here's how I got your information, you know, and here's if you want to look us up. And if that works for you, please, you can sign this and send it back to me. Or you can just call me here and we'll, I can get it closed as early as you know, in a few days and get a cashier's check in your hand. Boy, does that sing to people. Okay. Um, <laughs> go on. <laughs> <laughs> you have my attention because I mean, one, I'm just, I, I get how you can acquire a significant amount of land, but now what's going through my head is things like due diligence. Did you do this ahead of time? How did you know to, I mean, I can figure out how to find the person. I get that to some degree. Maybe there, and there's probably a ton I still don't know there because I don't know what I don't know yet. I'm thinking about how do I know I have the right piece of land uh, that that I mean, now I'm thinking about easements and, and just other things that could exist to make sure I didn't buy, you know, the the sewer drain as opposed to the actual 
you know, plot of land I think I'm getting. Right. So two, two things. Before she got my offer, a lot of Steven's magic went into it. We're just going to call it magic. Okay, sure. I'm he down. He is the pricing master, picking hot, good areas, pro, been doing it since the 90s. I don't question that at all. He get, he pulls the right properties. He prices them beautifully. He So by the time it comes back to me, all I got to look up, it, all I got to do is do my due diligence, which is now do I really want it? And on my mm. offer, I have six exceptions on there too. This is subject to basically me liking the property, your back taxes not being too out of hand, and a couple other things. So I have, a, I have an out if I don't want it. Mm. But the beauty is we just send them out in the mass. The people who like my offer, and these are pretty hot, low offers, and I know I can double my money overnight and still sell it wholesale and make somebody else's day. So when they call me back, I'm like, all right, I jump in. That's that's always been my role, our role. He's the data guy, and I'm the, I'm the talker and the buyer and the <laughs> seller, and that's what my team does. So she calls me back, then I do my due diligence, and all, and I may buy it. If it has access, great. Do I, and, and all this stuff, I don't really care about. I'm a wholesale person. That's I'm not going to build on it. I'm not going to for this is for rural vacant land. We do other types, but sure. The easiest is real This works land. for all types of real estate, right. including skyscrapers in Manhattan. Exactly. But then I start to do my due diligence. And I even will buy properties without access, but I might even change my price. Go, you know what? Mrs. Smith, I looked it up and I realized that road is nowhere near your property. <laughs> You're going to need four-wheel drive to get there. Have you seen it lately? And, she's, and she'll say, yeah, I kind of thought so. And I might say, look, I thought it was this, and I, I apologize, but... Here's what I can make work. And then it's up to her. And oftentimes they're still going to say yes. And there's still somebody out there. You'd be surprised. You know, I, I've learned over the years just because it doesn't appeal to me doesn't mean it's not going to appeal to somebody else. There's some guy that wants to take a four-wheel Jeep out there and ATV all day on his own property. And they love it. So, you know, you never really know. Totally understood. And, and I can see why they would absolutely take advantage of the offer. But I guess part of now what I'm thinking is how... Do you guys actually make any money? Because <laughs> that's, that's really what's going through my head. Other than, I mean, I, obviously reselling it or selling it on terms are the two things that come to my head, but I'm assuming maybe it's more than that or something different than that. Well, because oh, here's an example. I have a commercial deal right now in Ohio. Yeah. Well, okay. um, I paid $50,000 for it. It's just a piece of dirt. It's sitting next to like a Dairy Queen and a McDonald's or something. It's like right in the middle. I paid fifty thousand dollars. We're selling it for three hundred thousand dollars. It's worth seven hundred thousand uh, dollars. Okay, hold on. I have a question. Um, <laughs> yeah. The person who you bought it from were mm -hmm. they the were they not aware of its value? They were, they were whole, completely totally aware. aware. They had it on the market they're for seven hundred thousand dollars, and it wasn't moving. They just weren't interested in owning the property anymore. Got they it. were done. Our Equity. whole business model is predicated on on this concept, and I think a lot of very seasoned and successful real estate people uh, miss this concept throughout their whole careers. Our model is predicated on not improving property. So when you talk about entitlements and and EPA and all kinds of other stuff, that's for the person who we sell it to, and so we buy property and immediately resell it. In a lot of cases, the people that we, we resell it to then go and sell it on terms because we sell it so inexpensively. My task is to put together and implement an offer campaign mm -hmm. that, uh, that generates predictable and consistent results. So for every, let's say, four or 500 letters offers that we send out for rural vacant land, if I'm doing my job right, we buy a property, we resell it, and double our money wholesale and usually sell it to people uh, who are going to sell on terms without any improvement. Now, this is just all paper sitting in front of a computer. Yeah, totally understood. Now, okay, so then now let me ask you a, a couple of questions, Stephen. Um, when it comes down to it, though, wouldn't this, because th there are two things that are coming through my head. One is I've done direct mail campaigns. Uh, I usually don't enjoy writing the check for direct mail campaigns. Um, so I'm curious, uh, is that, I'm assuming that that was the impetus for being able to create the software so that you would only direct mail those that are the highest probability of success. 
we've done it both ways. Uh, and I, I'm not, you know, I'm happy to say I've done, done this, uh, a lot of wrong ways before we came up with the concept that we have now for decades. And to offset that cost, you're right. We, uh, started a company called offers to owners. So we are like, you know, we are the, uh, the bulk mail company. So Got we it. reduce costs that way. Oh, the, real, the real key to a successful um, direct mail campaign is sending offers with a direct custom dollar amount versus just a letter of interest. And I think some people miss that too. Yeah, no, I, it was very, I was like, wow, how can they have enough information to actually make a, you know, a binding offer as the first point of contact was that that spoke to me immediately because again, uh, being able to execute that in and of itself speaks to the amount of uh, skill that you've put into it on the front end. Now, I, I guess then my other question then becomes, because one of the major reasons I tend to like improved property or various other real estate strategies is simply for some of the, we'll, we'll call them the tax benefits that, that come along with it and so you, I'm assuming this is very capital gains heavy then? It's not because it's treated as, that's a great question. It's uh, treated as ordinary income because we, this okay. is our primary business and this is what we do. Okay. So it's not, you know, but we, for as far as tax advantages and depreciation and all that, yeah. we, um, no, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's something that's not in our lives. And we have other investments that roll up like S corp roll up. Okay. That we were forced to do uh, do it that way, which is fine. Got it. No, totally understood. I'm just making sure that everyone understands. You just got to have a plan to that that it's there. The same thing happens for us with all of our short-term rental students. I'm I'm always telling them that like, look, it's great. You're gonna love it, and you better have a plan for taxable income because it's coming. And here, in the plan we often recommend is buying obviously improved property, etc. So. I'm just cur I was just curious if that was the same thing or if it was somehow different. So when it comes down to to purchasing land, uh, I guess, is are there some I, I, I just don't know what I don't know. But are there some like states that are better than others or is this available to any any state like in the union, so to speak? Technically, it really works everywhere. It just depends on how much you want to spend, you know, like you buying so, property in new mexico is a little bit different than buying property where you and i are sitting right <laughs> <laughs> come on yeah, I, Jill, right? I want a thousand dollar piece of land in orange county you can do this exactly <laughs> we buy uh and our members buy a lot of land in orange county um we just launched a campaign in los angeles for infill lots uh we're kind of filling an order for that a developing company that they need property that's very specific zoning uh, in very specific zip codes that they'd have, they've identified, they actually kind of made our life real easy. And so we're doing a bunch of transactions with them. So it's all about pricing and predictable results. So Got from it. a data perspective, it's almost like a data business more than a real estate business. It's true. I can see where that is. I, I, I can see why that would be because the, the amount of, I mean, just trying to limit the cost and the expense and the time to close all those types of things curious um when you said you can close quickly jill are you, is title insurance involved in some way Mo um most of the time it is yes okay but every now and then and if it's a if it's a run to the bank situation as we call it that they really need some money really fast i'll do my due diligence i might self-close it and then go back and get title insurance right afterwards because it it does most of the properties that we're selling now, mm -hmm. it makes it more uh, marketable. You know, if it's bought with title insurance, of course, you don't have to, but I can I can demand more money on the sale side with it. There's a lot of different types of land. There's land niches within the land niche. If you, True. you know, so there's some rural vacant land that we buy so cheap, that's so uh, rural that it's just the, the cost of actually closing the property exceeds the purchase price. So in those situations, oh, wow. we just sell, you know, right. sell close it. We have stuff on eBay right now. Yeah. As a matter of fact, they're just that low that we just 
buy it and try and just and that's sell a whole it. separate operation with separate staff and separate everything mm -hmm. interesting okay so you're getting to where i was coming from with like what where i was going next was to understand more of the exit so the exit is for you guys the exit is often just sell the entire property but what's real okay again cash flow diary i can't help but think why not create it why not sell it on terms and create this bundle of notes that mm -hmm. you you would be able to get a high yield on well we you sure can and we sure did and we we still do so usually it's it's the the really good properties that we might want to hang on to for a while because mm. what ends up happening okay. is they we don't usually sell the notes we usually just keep the property anyway and often what happens you know at some point the percentage of people falling off and disappearing is really, really high. So when that happens, we just take the property back and then sell it again. Yeah. There's a huge, huge yeah. opportunity for land leasing too. We did, I did a deal um, before Jill was in the picture where I bought a piece of urban property really inexpensively and then leased it to a, a RV storage company right next door for a pretty good price. And, uh, you know, eventually sold it to him. There's also, in a rural vac vacant land scenario, I bought a very large ranch adjacent to an existing functioning ranch and just leased the land to them. So there's a lot of ways to cash flow from land. In fact, our original program is called that, Cash Flow From Land. Okay, so now I'm going to ask a very selfish question for myself. Here we go. Let's pretend, hypothetically, but not so hypothetically, <laughs> I, 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 because again, when I'm, I'm running a, a, a short-term rental model, it's what we do. And I also know running, say, an RV park would be very profitable and is basically land plus sewer. And, you know, that, the, that, that's like what I, what I think about. If I wanted to acquire a five-acre parcel of land in the state of California and or Utah or Nevada, you're telling me I could be that specific and even including the use case and you would be able to help me find something? Well, I, uh, I'm i being real honest here. I wouldn't be able to help you find something, but I could show you how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and I, can, I can just about guarantee, uh, I can do everything short of guaranteeing that whatever you do find, you're gonna be buying it for half of what it's worth the next day. Can I'm, I'm gonna add to that. So what we, what we do, Jay, though, is could I get in and I only want this size mm -hmm. in this area and I want it zoned this way. So I know it could be used how I use it and only send offers to that group. Heck yeah. And then a very predictable number are going to send either call you back or sign them and send it back. Then that's when the works due diligence work starts for us. Everybody does this backwards. Everybody goes out and looks at a piece of property and say, and says, I have, it does this round peg property fit in my square hole and what do I have to do to change it to get it to that point? And they spend a lot of time and energy and usually, it, you know, it doesn't happen. We do it the other way. We send all this stuff out. We, we, and then what comes back is very predictable. We analyze it according to the round peg and put the round peg in a round hole, if that makes sense. And we, it, it, that, that concept, it, it, it puts us in the driver's seat because I can send out 10,000 offers or I can send out 10 million. And the process is just about the same and takes just about the same amount of time the way that we price it with very predictable results. Yeah, no, I, I like this. This, I mean, there are many, I can see this being something a, a person uh, just graduating high school would be able to do as opposed to necessarily even going to college. Because I'm assuming some of, the, like, what's an average entry point on yet? The, you said the rural land? Stuff like what? What's what? What would you say that that looks like in terms of? Uh, we'll go with a price per acre, since obviously the plot size could be different. Well, I'll tell you. I mean, you're exactly right. We have several people um, in our community that are fresh out of school, fresh out of the military, stuff like that, and they've been following us for a while, and they've saved up some money. I used to tell them, you could really do this. I'd like to have ten thousand dollars to invest. If you could, because if you could come up with ten thousand dollars to invest, mm. what I would tell you to do, and I would show you to do, is how to go out and and get ten one thousand dollar properties that you could sell tomorrow for two thousand, because they're worth five. 
So you do that real quick. Now you got $20,000. Okay, now do it again. Now you got 40, you see where I'm going. And, you know, and then at $150,000, you might start making some different decisions. Do I wanna keep this up? Do I wanna go, do I wanna add a zero on my properties? Do I wanna go for a different property type? Do I wanna go for maybe some info lots? Do I wanna try this with houses or, you know, whatever it is? Because we have access to all of that. Yeah, Jill no, and I, are, I like it. I'm sorry, go ahead, Steve. Jill and I are licensed providers for the largest three assessors database aggregators in the uh, in the country. RealQuest Pro, Title Pro, 24-7, and Datatree. And, and Jill's like motioning to me right now to stop getting so technical. But, you know, it's really important to understand that the quality of data is what matters. Oh, I got you. And Jill, it's okay. If he gets technical, I'll make sure he says it in English so that everybody else can understand. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> it's totally fine. Totally fine. I, I'm just, what's going through my head is, remember how I said earlier, Jill, I was thinking about, I am a father of three daughters. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going, huh. I wonder, like my, my 11 year old is, well, they're both, they're all really entrepreneurial in their own way. And, but my 11 year old would probably be willing to do something like this. That's what's really going through my head at this particular moment. And I'm like, that would be interesting yeah. because, you know, hey, you know, help her out. And she could, I don't know what she, she would just keep going because she would never stop. She's, she's not, she wouldn't stop until she was the best because that's just that's the way great. she is. Uh, but it sounds relatively simple. Like, I mean, that, that's what I'm hearing now do a significant number of the people just, like I said, keep them and create bunches of notes? What are the, let me, let me ask a different, let me ask this differently. What is the unique exit strategy that we have never heard that is possible with land that you guys go, yeah, we do this all the time? Well, there's, okay, so yeah, I mean, what we do, and this is all through the course of a lot of decades. Sure. We love to buy. Yep. Because we've established this massive uh, list of people that are consistent buyers from us. We love to buy the property, uh, usually market up a certain predictable amount that we disclose to who we're gonna sell it to and then resell it for cash. That's because our, we're just an acquisition machine. Um, and then they have a bunch of choices. They can develop the property. We had, I had one guy buy an 80 acre piece of property from me and put an airport in it. Um, and you know, I'm he's sorry, begging me for more airport? constantly. And so- but, You said an airport. I just wanna make sure I heard that right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like a rural cargo, cargo airport in California, actually. I go on. And, uh, <laughs> but the typical deal for us is we sell a property to a, res we, we are the reseller. So we buy it, we immediately resell it very inexpensively at a very low wholesale amount. Uh, we have consistent customers that then get it, own it, resell it on terms, let the note season and sell the note after six or eight months at a discount rate, which you know, all your uh, listeners oh, yeah. are familiar with. And, well, what's funny is that that's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, mm -hmm. why would I not just build a, a portfolio of notes that I could then liquidate if I so decided? Or, I mean, why? I'm like, why would you not do this? And <laughs> that, <laughs> like, this is crazy. Um, but, I, and I think, one of the things uh, I think I'm going to hit on something right here. So in, in all cases, though, you pretty much have to buy or I'm sorry, not buy, but build your own buyers list, I would assume, in some way, shape or form. Yeah. And we and that's an uh, integral part of our education and how you use social media. And what's great about this, this, this product type is that it's very, um, it's very unique. So just organically, you can spread the word pretty quickly. And, and if people are interested what I've noticed over the years about land people is that that career kind of chooses them. They don't career, they don't choose it for themselves and it just sinks to them. Like a lot of people are just like, what are you talking about land? Forget it. I want to buy a house. I want to flip houses. So, but the people that understand land, they just seem to find you. What about any sort of resource rights? Are that, is that ever included? Is that like part of the deal? You mean like, you were talking like mineral rights? Yeah. Right. Land, yeah. water, um, you know, access, you those types of things. We usually, we just, we usually roll along that we're just doing surface rights. And if someone acquires some in the process, Hey, good for them. I'm, I'm not out seeking out that in particular. Mineral rights are real hard to trace. Uh, they only get conveyed via the deed. So you really need to look back through the chain of title. It's a lot of paper intense uh, work to see who owns mineral rights. So we, Jill and I, 
um, decided a long time ago that regardless of who owns the mineral rights, by the time it gets to us, we are selling the, the property, assuming that it doesn't have any. Right. Got it. Okay. Well, then let me ask another one because this one be of also personal interest. Um, what about the ones where they have, a say, a cell phone tower uh, already on the piece of land? Great. Yeah, I love those types of now properties. Now it's improved. And billboards. <laughs> we have a lot of, we have, uh, I'll call them clients that love billboard right along the freeway property. And, you know, it cracks me up because I'm like, there's no chance that the uh, governing agencies are going to allow a billboard to go in this, on this property, but they just love to buy it from us and collect it. Like, you know, I've heard people use this phrase on the internet recently. It's like man jewelry. They just, they love to collect it for some mm -hmm. reason. Well, if it already, okay, so if it already has the cell phone tower on it, wouldn't they then inherit the lease? Or is it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, now that, you're, you're already buying some cash flowing on there. That's exact. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so let's be really clear. That's, that would be my 100% focus is the land with cell phone towers on them because having owned them, I really, really, really want to sell that lease <laughs> to somebody. Yeah. I mean, that's the definition of passive income right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, okay, I got it. This is interesting. Yeah. I like what you guys are, are up to. Now, for those that have listened this far and have probably just as intrigued as I am, um, what's going to be the best way for them to, to track you guys down, find out more about what you're doing? Check us out at landacademy.com. You'll find everything there crazy I love it I, I the, the thing that I like about um, being an entrepreneur is that we get to create and find a way out of what is seemingly no way and 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 do something with it and then you you guys are actually out there sharing it uh, with others now as we wind down I've got a final question for you because I'm curious to hear <laughs> I'm curious to hear your answer on this one um, that there are a number of people who have been listening, uh, et cetera, today, and they started in one particular place, and now they're at another. You know, they've listened this entire time. Maybe they've been intrigued in various different forms, and they're at what I like to call that precipice of decision. You know, the, and when that happens, you're human. You know, you've been there. When, mm -hmm. we, when we get to that part, what happens is that Oftentimes we have a companion and that companion comes in the form of a voice and it's a voice that reminds us of Why it won't work how it didn't work last time and mm -hmm. you you're gonna really do what I mean You've just heard some people on a podcast. Who are they really? I mean, they don't really do this 16,000 No, and, 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 and even if it, that's true, it's not gonna work for you. I mean and for some people They're related to that voice So my question to you is as follows Let's pretend that this time it's gonna be different. This time they're actually gonna follow through. They're gonna do exactly what you suggest. And they're gonna do so in the next 24 to 48 hours. <laughs> what would you suggest that they do? This is right up Jill's. This is yeah. Jill's. Jill loves this stuff. They would, <laughs> they, they would scrape together what they have. Um, Seriously, if they want to do this, we just had a, we just talked to a guy on a member call last Thursday. He joined our program. Six days in, his mailer is going out. Nice. He is not stopping. That guy will kill it. Yeah, he's gonna be. He uh, and he did exactly what we said. Everybody, you get into this, and you, we all have our own. Like you said, the voice. Oh, that that can't be right. That can't be this. I'm gonna put your head down. Listen to everybody. We have hundreds of people that were, right in your shoes, right ahead of you. And they're going to tell you the same thing. Trust it. Do it. Stephen and Jill say, follow the steps. Watch what happens. Right. And then they're going to do that and come up and go, holy cow, this works. I need to go buy some more. I mean, I would answer it th this way. I would. We have a, our own podcast. I would spend the next 48 hours listening to that. Okay. But we have, I mean, 1,200 episodes, I think, uh, since 2015. And then we have a free website called landinvestors.com which is essentially like a facebook but for what we do and all of our members are in there it's it's totally free some of the advanced members there are advanced members are in there there are regular members and then there's there's a huge free community in there i would go in there and ask really tough questions like are these guys for real is this a bunch of malarkey you know what's the catch it can't be this easy and then a lot of people will pipe in and say and, and really really tell you the truth because and shows like this, it, we are it, we are talking about the highlights and telling great stories. But 
there's a lot of hard work involved in this and a huge uh, commitment, a mental commitment, which I think you referred to earlier. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. You, you do realize that the, the one challenge with what you just said, Stephen, is that most people don't use the word malarkey anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jay. There are a few of those. <laughs> Facebook shut me down for like 30 days for using uh, that word. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm just trying to tell you. It, it's all good, though. It's all good. I understood what you meant, and, and that's great. Now, uh, I, I just, I, like I said earlier, I, I just want to say thanks, uh, you know, because, it, like I said, superheroes have to make a choice. They, they choose to share their special gift they, they, because you, you don't have to, but you've chosen to. And because you've chosen to, there are thousands of people across the globe who are, are now experiencing a completely different life. And I appreciate that uh, 100 percent. And be, because that's exactly what we're here to do is to help more, help more people become entrepreneurs, realize that it's possible, possible for them and you guys are you're out there doing it and making it happen. So let me be just one of the first to say thank you for taking the time to invest your knowledge, your wisdom, and your insight here with us today at the Cashflow Diary. Thank you, Jay. All right, Thanks ladies so, and gentlemen. So much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean? That means get over to landacademy.com. When? Now. Why? Because you know, you heard. You heard the, 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 the curiosity in my own voice. You heard a way for you to make it happen. You heard this could have been your entry point. If Lan has been singing to you, then well, you know exactly what to do. You know where to go. And you can't even use the excuse of, I don't have the money, Jay, because they gave you a resource that was 100% free as in doesn't cost you any money but will cost you time and that's what's important go make that investment today because here's the thing until you write an offer your life isn't going to change ladies and gentlemen it's been fun talking to you today i look forward to talking to you soon until next time and we're clear good stuff ladies and gentlemen Thank Great you. Stuff. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I love the, how you do it. I love your just, energy. I love your casual kind of like we are just, let's just have a conversation. That was a blast. Can we do it again tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was noticing you guys do every weekday at three. Yeah. Yeah. That that's impressive. Uh, <laughs> that's like impressive and a commitment. Um, so well, I'll stick to my, you know, two podcasts a week for now. <laughs> so but, because we've been <laughs> doing it for a while. I mean, we're only at like almost we're, we're getting close to 600 episodes, but you know, so yeah, that, but that's, I think that that's, that's amazing. I, like I said, I truly appreciate what you guys do creating opportunity in an un, I mean, it's an uncommon way. So that, that makes it awesome. So we're going to get, um, to, we're going to get to, uh, uh, doing all of the post-production work, editing, etc. blah, 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 blah. We'll let you know when this goes live. My suspicion is that we're looking at the end of October before this is actually ready. Um, and for those of you watching live, you, you, you got to see it ahead of time. So yay, way to go. Um, and so I'm sorry, I was looking at the chat to see if there was any questions for you guys real fast. I don't, uh, nope, I don't see any. Uh, they've, they've been talking, but I don't see any obvious questions for you guys. So nonetheless, um, did you guys have any other questions for me before you go? Hopefully some of our people tuned in. I, I quickly told my staff to Michael let Robertson them know. is here. I don't know who that is, but he said he Michael Robertson did mention he said I, he said that he's a member of Land Academy. Uh, cool. he said he started contacting sellers three months ago and has eleven deals complete. Yay. Oh my gosh, see? Yeah. Well you can't Yay. buy that kind of publicity. That's you know that what? So That's why we do this, Jay. Yep. Oh, I, I agree with you because I, I try to parental tell people that parental. same thing. That's what I have is parental pride. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> I try to tell people that same thing is that, you know, my wife, there was, let me see, hold on. I, six years ago when I was like 38, I called myself retired and I got really bored. And what, quote unquote, refired me up, so to speak, was learning to share what I knew with others. And I get more enjoyment out of hearing people get their first deals, make their first six and seven figures, and then do us getting another deal. And that, that's, so that, and that keeps me going. So I, I totally can relate, I understand, 
And I agree. I mean, there's nothing like changing a person's life by helping them realize that that superhero is inside of them. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Yeah, I love that analogy. Yeah. Yep. Thank that, you. No problem. Now, um, the you said the event was coming up. I saw the event, but I don't remember where. Was there a website for it? So that way I can find. I can see if I can come or whatnot. I don't know. Yeah, check out it's landinvestorslive.com. Live.com. Okay. All right, I'll look at that and I will let um, Megan or someone from my end catch up with you guys if that's something that we can make happen and kind of that go from there. That would be cool. We'd okay. love to have you. Yeah, that'd be great, actually. Okay, cool. Um, anything else? No, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad that we could make it happen. And um, thank you. <laughs> man, you guys are awesome. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Take care. Thanks. All right, bye. Bye. -bye. bye.